Okay, so this is Deepin 2014, the release candidate. Now, Deepin derives from the Linux Deepin project. It's since been just renamed as Deepin, and I suspect this is just in an effort to and not necessarily brand itself as a Linux distribution because to be honest it's a very 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 unique operating system and I reckon they've done some amazing work with the user interface and the way that one actually uses this operating system now first up the desktop does look a little different but at the same time it does look very familiar it's basically OS 10 without a top panel so then you might be asking well how do you get around well a lot of it is to do with hot corners now obviously you have a dock down here on the bottom to launch applications that you're commonly going to use, but you also have some controls here such as mounting and unmounting different drives. You also have your network connection and power monitors. You have your clock and you've got your trash can there as well. And they're stables, they always stay there. Now the different hot corners of the desktop space is where things start to get interesting. So you've got show and hide the desktop in this corner, then you've got your application launcher up in this corner which can also be triggered using the Windows or Meta key on your keyboard and then you can see here you've got all of the different applications that come pre-installed. Now just to give you a bit of history about the Deepin project, Deepin is a Chinese developed distribution. It started out a number of years ago and they've really experimented with a lot of different user interfaces over the years. They've kind of moved between more Windows oriented user interfaces two obviously more Mac oriented ones, especially in this release. But one thing that they have definitely done is they have developed their own suite of applications and their own user interface in each and every release that is unique to them. Now, reportedly the Deepin project has about 30 developers working on it. And it just goes to show what is possible when you have a dedicated development team working on a distribution. Now, of course, this is an Ubuntu based distribution, so they're not having to do too much of the hard yards as far as developing an actual distribution base, but they develop an entirely unique user interface and one that I think they can be pretty proud of. Now, this is mostly HTML5 based according to the release notes. And what you're looking at here is the control center. Now it is here on the dock if you want to launch it from there, but it's also here from a hot corner as well, down in the bottom right hand corner. Now as you can see, as you swipe through each of these different categories, you can change these different settings and they're all very unique to, to the Deepin project. I have never seen this kind of concept done in any other distribution. And so I think for, for what they have achieved here, they deserve some major props because it looks pretty slick. And at the same time, you're not really sacrificing too much on functionality. In fact, having some boot menu options and some global keyboard shortcut options here in the preferences is uh, it, it's a pretty slick menu. Now then the application launcher itself has got your favorite applications, of course, shown here. And then you've also got your categorized applications. Now it does come with a couple of pre-installed apps, basically just to fill out the basic needs of a desktop. And that includes the Google Chrome web browser, Pigeon Instant Messenger, and the Thunderbird mail client. Then you've also got a disk burner with Bracero, and you've got their own media playback with Deepin Movie and Deepin Music Player. And then while we're on the Deepin train, we've also got the Deepin Game Center, Deep in screenshot, which you can see, which you can see here, you can just take different screenshots of the different windows you have open. You've got a USB boot creator for creating a bootable USB drive of Deep in Linux, and you also have a translator and their software center. Now, as you can see here, these are all the Deep in specific apps that come with the Deep in project, and uh, they're actually all kind of similar in the fact that they're all skinned, and you can change the skins of these applications. Uh, and obviously add skins to them as well. Now all of these apps, especially the software center and the game center, now you'll have to forgive the game center because it obviously has not been translated yet. So it's all in Chinese, which isn't a whole lot of fun for me, but nevertheless, you can see the games that are available here and they all have ratings and they are also uh, broken down into categories as well. And now it appears that most of these games are flash based games that you can play online. But still, it's a nice little touch to have a little game center uh, of all of the different games that you have. The kind of the kind of tweaks that the Deepin team have made to typical Linux infrastructure has uh, has really changed the way that that consumers can see these distributions and use them. 
I mean, if we discount the game center because of the fact it's in Chinese for the moment, but if you have a look at something like the software center, you can see here that straight out of the box, you have a bunch of colorful tiles here giving you suggestions of apps that you might want to install, both hot applications and then also you've got these banners up the top here showing off some really good open source ap uh, applications such as Maxthon, the, the web browser mix, the DJ software, Darktable, photo development, Blender, 3D animation, VLC, the media player and transmission, the BitTorrent client. All of these are really good applications and also you've got these colorful tiles here along the way that uh, that not only give you a description of the application and a screenshot but they also have comments there and ratings and if you want to install it you just hit the little blue arrow down by, down by the icon now you can also manage your updates and obviously uninstall apps here as well but this is a very good example of what a software center could be if somebody spent a little bit of time on user interface now obviously it'd be good to see a little more categorization as a lot of these apps are still running by their project names which can be pretty confusing, but it's a start. And it certainly looks a lot prettier than what the Ubuntu Software Center is for example. Now the D Music Player does look relatively minimalistic, but I imagine if you grab a folder of music and chuck it in there it will do its thing and it should play the music the way it says on the tin. And what do you know it does. And the same can be said about the D Movie Player as well. It does what it says it'll do on the tin, and it, and it does it pretty minimalistically without getting in your way too much. There's really not much else I can say about this distribution. You do get the, King, the Kingsoft Office Suite as opposed to the OpenOffice or LibreOffice Suite, and it does look a lot more like Microsoft Office, which I think is not a bad thing in my opinion. But there is so much that is unique to Deep in Linux that I suggest you give it a shot. If you can get past a bit of the lost in translation, elements of the distribution, that it is Chinese by origin and therefore it is translated over to English. If you can get past that, then there's actually quite a lot of unique stuff going on here. I love what this team are doing and the, some of their design choices are pretty good as well. I'm not entirely sure if I'm a fan of the, doc, of the icons on this dock, but I mean, if you're willing to overlook that, and I think I would be, then there's certainly a lot to like about this distribution. Now it recommends that it, that it only needs 500 meg to get off on a cold boot. And if we have a look at the system monitor, we will see that at the moment we are using almost a gig, and that's mainly because I'm screencasting at the same time. But a lot of the components that are at the core of this system are obviously GNOME and Ubuntu based. So every now and again, you are reminded that you are using a Linux distribution with apps such as Nautilus making appearances, and Gedit and other apps. But it could certainly take you a while if you weren't familiar with Linux to realize that you are actually using a Linux distribution. They've got very helpful startup guides, they've got very helpful installation wizards, and overall it's a very well thought out distribution. Well that'll be all from me this week, let me know what you think about this very unique distribution in the comments below, and also you can contact me on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. See you all in the next video, and until then, peace out ladies and gentlemen.